are talking like this and we are having these progressive conversations it's fire but like i had to realize too because like i said I'm, I'm still bringing back everything that you said in this episode was like losing people from the beginning falling out in business uh relationships like having to hold yourself accountable like all of these things i realized like yo i've i've experienced all of my 20s and i'm still experiencing it now but i've learned from those things and that's what i'm hearing from you i'm like you you you've learned from these things you figured out all right look cool that happened <laughs> let me go to here mm-hmm. okay this happened let me go here so you figured out something that worked for you and i feel like a lot of people are scared to like put themselves out there and be in the forefront and take that risk or like so what gives you that like mental fortitude to like you know what say fuck it i'm gonna just do it like i don't care what it is i'm gonna just do it um think about it Mm -hmm. if you don't try you lose Mm -hmm. if you try it you don't know if you're gonna lose or win what's the worst they're gonna say is no exactly (laughs) you get what i'm saying so it's like (laughs) i just like fuck it give it a shot it's whatever happens happens but did you develop that over the years or you always been like that because i like i want to say i always been like that because it was just like the only time i wasn't like that was in high school yeah okay okay in middle school Mm -hmm. i I was afraid of rejection back then but as i got older going through what i went through you know juvenile delinquent and stuff like that quote unquote you know yeah i'm like I could even put myself out there or I could be in my box and just do what I do and just listen to somebody for the rest of my life. Did 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 learning how to take rejection help you when it came to being a barber? Yes. Because I feel like that's something that I feel like it's not <clears throat> it's not it's not spoken uh spoken upon a lot, but like men know no matter what race you is, when you go to the barber and you say no to that barber. You gotta think about how they're taking that. So, <laughs> like in in that case, because it's like we have all been to the bar where we like, nah, bro, like I'm I'm cool. Like you, we gonna get back to being in the front and in the back. Like this is the conversation we're gonna have now. So it's like dealing with that rejection. Is it because you've been in the front or are you in the back, or is it like because they see the work? Like what's like break so, that? <laughs> so it's like it ain't even this. Bot, what I'm about to say makes no sense, but I hear this a lot. Mm-hmm. So you got customers and clients that will walk in mm-hmm. and they be like oh no nah, that's my first time here um all right cool well i'll take you right now mm-hmm. now nah, i'm gonna go away with him <laughs> all right you sure you want to see my work like i'm gonna show you I'm, I'm nice i'm not me personally i'm not about to beg nobody to sit in my chair but i am about to sell myself and to an extent exactly okay and the thing is i'm not kissing your ass just to have you sit in my chair that's not gonna happen Mm-hmm. But it's like at the end of the day, you don't know what I can do. You don't know what I'm capable of. But just like you walking in here saying, nah, you're going to go to him or you're going to go mm-hmm. to somebody else because you see their work and you don't tell me no because you haven't seen my work, but you're in a rush. Now you about to go down the street to, no offense, <laughs> but you about to go down the street to Same. some Dominicans or somewhere else and mm-hmm. you're still going to get messed up. Mm-hmm. So it's like, at the end of the day, it's like you're still taking a chance. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you tell me, no, nah, I'm going to wait for that person or you're going to go such and such, okay, have a good day. You're right. But let me give you a chance to see my work. So you feel like a lot of people aren't really like trying to, because well, like you said, when you walk in a new shop by you, like, it's 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 a, it's a decision because this is like your, your look. Like, you feel me? So it's like, so when, when, you, when y'all deal with that, it's like, well, well listen, <laughs> like it this, is a look. This, is, this is my like, but you know damn well you go home and you don't get no <laughs> cheats that night. You know what type of look that you got. So, <laughs> nah, that nah. But that too, that too. I'm not gonna lie. That's that's definitely a factor because we all know when a woman compliments you on a cut, you win the game. Right? Mm-hmm. You you definitely the game. So in what's the game? The, you don't won. What's the psychology like? I want to say about like the orders of the chairs and where you sitting at in the shop. Because right. we didn't talk about this on the last one. I thought we did, but I didn't know that was like a thing. It's not really a thing. It is. It's, it's, it's just an unspoken rule, quote unquote. I was wondering, that you, like each profession has their unspoken rules. So, this yeah, is so it's kind of like for us, you. it doesn't matter. I get but you. But a lot of people think because you're in the front 
oh, you know how to cut, or wherever the close the owner is. If you're closer to the owner, you know how to cut. Nah, really? I, I, I want, thought that though. I wanted to like cut that narrative. I like, thought that I wanted to cut that narrative. When I first Damn. started, I sat in the back. You got when me. I was on South Broad. You was. You was. I was in the back with the stylist, and the crazy thing is. You know what made me want to break that narrative? Mm-hmm. Seeing that all those barbers sitting in their chair, including the owner, and they walk to the back to come sit in my chair. And you know what's funny? It felt good. You know what's funny now that you say that? All right, I'm not going to lie, y'all. I will be going to nails, <laughs> but I need to start going. Um, But my barber that I go to, he's in the back. So, so like, I, I get what you're saying though. It's just like, yo, like, it don't matter where you sit at. It's mm-hmm. all about, are you good? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Because at I the end you. of the day, hell, I know some people that's better than owners. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. But um, it's you know, it ain't about who's better than who. As long as you get your your head cut and you get taken care of. Then you good. You ain't walking around with the biscuit looking like a crackhead, a fiend, whatever. <laughs> like you straight. So Nah, cause cause like I said, that's that's a that's a big decision right there, picking on who like, you know, who who, who we about to go to. Um, so boom. Doing all this now, like what I wanna say, <clears throat> what's the motivation now? Because like you've you've experienced the shop. You experienced the pandemic you experienced having it just like yo all right like i gotta pull up on people like so what's it like what's the difference between being a traveler barber and just a stationary barber all right so me personally i'm trying to get away from traveling mm. but i love to travel i'm just not into going house to house anymore mm-hmm. now because mm-hmm. it's like why why would I go to somebody within the same driving radius of me when I could actually have you come to me? Mm. If I sit here all day in this studio, mm. you know how many podcasts you can do? If I just stay down here and crunch it out. Exactly. Yeah. So why go ahead and pack your stuff and leave, slow down your rule just for you to go uh mm. cut do somebody else podcast, then come back here and do your own podcast. But but what wouldn't you make more money though? Um charging See, these people? Yes. But you can also because I'm gonna give you a, a round figure. Start home visits start at a hundred dollars. Woo! And two dollars plus Yeah. Damn. And I'm gonna keep it hundred with you. A lot of people had the money to pay it, but the thing is a lot of people don't wanna pay it. Everybody yeah. trying to save it down. So it's like at the end of the day. Instead of them paying that, they come to the shop. When people want home visits, they just lazy. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest, especially if you you can walk and you, you know <laughs> you can come into the shop. Um, what's the inflation like? What's what like? I know everybody has inflation, but for inflation as a barber, because we went from ten dollar haircuts to fit to fifteen dollar shape ups to twenty dollar haircuts, et cetera, et cetera. Like what's the inflation for y'all? Cause people I see people complain all the time, like, God damn these barbers charging da, da, da. but it's like I respect I'm, it, but for the people that don't understand it. I'ma keep it a hundred with you. I honestly think that barbers should get paid no less than forty dollars. I'm gonna be honest. Mm. Not saying it because of me, because I am who I am. I make my own prices and I do my own thing. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I want everybody to eat too. Yeah, yeah. If they took the time out to go to mm-hmm. school, get their license, or whatever the case may be, and they really put the work in, why, why like they can't be worth that forty dollars? You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Nah. Like, and with the inflation, I think about it. Our rent going up. Mm-hmm. Car note. Yeah. Uh, tuition. We got and we got a life to live. Yeah, true. So when everything else is up in the world goes up, we gotta go up too. Yeah, cause products and everything going up, like nothing staying the same. But like I said, I, I I agree with it. But it's like, like I said, I'm just speaking for the people, and they like, damn man, my cut used to be twenty five, now and I gotta pay thirty five. But guess what? 
You just paid two fifty, two to three fifty or five hundred for them Yeezys. <laughs> you ain't understand that though. But I feel like some people are sacrificing or not acknowledging as it. <laughs> nah, cut it, <laughs> cut. But I see you walk in with some three hundred dollar shoes on your feet. You got a two hundred dollar belt on you, but you coming in being cheap as hell about a haircut. Mm-hmm. I don't want to hear nothing. Or your little man asked for a design, and you know that thing about $60, $70, and you, nah, I ain't got it. I want to hear nothing. Oh, all right, I got you on a discount. Nah, I'm not saying none of that shit. <laughs> you look like you got it, you got it. You better stop faking the funk if you don't. Hey. Like, 